allow me to show you step by step what to do to make this burnt forest. Open Unreal, then select Film, then Blank, then name the project, then Create. Unreal is now open. We are not going to use the default level. Create a new one. Select the basic template. Now this player start is for video games. We're just making an environment. Click on it, then press Delete. We don't need that big ground because we are going to, right now, create a much better ground. This new level we just created is not saved yet. Do Control plus S to save it, then name it. Do Control plus Spacebar to open the content drawer. We created a new level, then named it Forest. There it is, that's the level we're currently in. Main is the default level we got when creating the project. Double click on it and it will open. Back to Forest, double click on it. Click on Selection, then choose Landscape. This big grid is where the ground will appear. It's way too big for the very simple project we're going to do. See this thing that says 8 times 8? Just change the 8s to 2s. Yeah, that's perfect. So now just hit Create. Okay, the ground is now created. You got a big brush here. You can change its size and its strength. I will put the strength very low and the brush not too big either. I'm placing myself somewhere close to where the camera will be to have a better idea of how to sculpt my ground. I don't want mountains here, I just don't want the ground to be flat. If you made a baby mountain too big, there is an erase tool right here. It kind of does the opposite of the sculpt tool. Back to sculpt, and let's finish this. Click landscape mode, then go back to selection. And for that red error message, you can just click play and then stop. We got a good ground now. Open bridge. But first, in case you don't have the bridge tab, let me show you how to add it. You can just open the content drawer by doing control plus spacebar, then right click. Add Quixel content. And it's back. Search for burnt. Don't press enter, just wait. And here you have the burnt forest collection. Click on it. We will use those burnt trees and textures to build up our scene. Look at what you have and choose something for the ground. I like this one. I think it fits well. I won't download the highest quality version to save some hassle to my computer. Click on the ground to select it if it isn't already, then scroll down to find landscape material. Search for the name of the ground asset you downloaded. The texture repeats itself too much. Let's fix that. Double click on the material, check tiling, open its settings and put these two numbers lower. Still bad, let's try lower. Point one, save then close this window. If I go far away, it repeats, but we're staying close to the ground, so this should work just fine. Back to bridge, and now let me show you something pretty cool. Click and hold the bridge tab, then drag it where you want it to be. And update is available. Cool, I'll do it later. Make this a little bigger. From this thing, you can simply drag and drop the 3D assets in your scene.
If it says 3D plants, do not drag and drop directly. There's a better way to add grass and plants. We'll use it later. I'm done adding all the 3D assets in my scene. Now double click here to make this full screen. Now is time to add the plants. You can just download and then export all the plant assets. Now search for Coast, and just like the Burnt Forest pack, we are going to get some assets from this pack. Download them all. Then take this bridge tab and place it somewhere. And again, drag and drop all these 3D assets. And now the bridge tab can go back at its place. So these are the assets we will play with today, plus the plant assets a bit later. Add a camera now. Click perspective and go in the camera view. I'm starting to play some assets already. The trees at the back. Now I'm just quickly looking at what I have. Press E to get the rotation tool. Q, W, E, and R allows you to quickly switch tools. See, there's a snapping on this. Not very handy when I need to make it exactly on the ground. Disable snapping here. I want to just merge it with the ground. Rotation has a snapping too. Disable it here. Now I'm placing the camera. Hold Ctrl and L at the same time to move the sun. If you like this tutorial so far, may I ask you to subscribe, please? You would get new easy to follow tutorials regularly, and I would get to keep making these videos. Now click on Exponential Height Fog. And let's try some high density. Not too important for now. Scroll down a little and turn on Volumetric Fog. Pretty big difference if you ask me. Plus, we'll need its settings later for the colors of the scene. Again, hold Ctrl and L, then move your cursor around to move the sun position. Click Exponential Height Fog again in the Outliner. I think a lower fog value could look better. Yeah, let's do 1.5 for now. If Ctrl plus L doesn't work to move the sun, just make sure the scene is selected. You can really just click on any object just to tell the editor you are editing the scene. Let's now change the directional light. Lowering the intensity would make the sun weaker. And we want a dark scene, so that's perfect. Also, you can click on this white rectangle and change the sun color. A lot of possibilities around here, but I want more of a gray color, so let's go around the blue. So, I went back in the fog settings to make it 1.4. I'm still not very satisfied with the sun position.
you could go back in the directional light to make its density a little lower again. How about we start building that scene? Click on this to get out of the camera if you're still in it. You can now select the camera from the outliner and click on the pin icon to pin it. And now I am placing all the assets to build up a good scene. You know, you don't have to do exactly like me. Use some creativity and have fun. You can press F on your keyboard to instantly get close to an object. Press and hold the Alt key on your keyboard, or Option if you're on Mac, then drag the selected object to duplicate it. And make sure to rotate the tree so it's not too obvious that it's the same one. You might want some trees closer, and other much further away, fading in the fog. Move, scale, and rotate all assets as much as you want. Okay, let's go back in the camera. Click anywhere in the scene just to select it. See all these icons? They represent the sun, the clouds, and all things you really don't need to see here. Just press G on your keyboard. That will hide them from you. Back in the fog settings, I want to change some stuff. I just put the density to 1.5. Scroll down there and you can change the fog start distance. Oh, and put the view distance to max. For the start distance, I want to change it so the closer to the camera doesn't get much fog, I need a little, but not much. And then maybe I can make the far distance get more fog. Okay, that's good. I just realized this one is not touching the ground. In fact, most assets are not well merged with the ground right now. Let's quickly fix that. Back in the camera, let's see what we got here. Control plus spacebar to open the content drawer. I'll go in the Mega Scans, then 3D Assets folder. All the 3D assets are in there. Now look to the left. I can open that 3D Assets folder and see all the same folders, just in a different way. This is very useful to quickly see what you got. Want to add this rock? Just drag and drop. Press R on your keyboard to quickly access the Scale tool. Then, I want to get out of the camera so I can get close to my rock and select the middle cube so I can scale it in all directions at the same time. Now back in the camera and there you got a big rock. Perfect, it can stay right here. Now I just want one more tree. You can just press escape on your keyboard to unselect everything. Uh, look, don't you think the ground is a little blurry? Type R streaming pool size and then make it zero to kind of disable the budget. Press enter and voila. Next, we need to add the foliage. Click selection then foliage. All the grass and other plant assets we downloaded are in there. Click the first one, hold shift, then click the last one. And now that they're all selected, you can check them all at the same time. You got a brush here if you click, it paints using the selected plants. The density is really too strong.
you can just hit Ctrl Z to undo that. Now look what happens if you unselect them all. You simply won't see a brush. Let's put the density much lower. Oh, there are still none selected. But if I select them all, I now have a brush. Also, I just put the density lower, so let's see what it does. That's almost perfect. Just one thing, this plant and only this one should have lower density. So again, Ctrl Z to undo that. Unselect everything, then select only the lupin. And this density number below is the density of what we selected. Okay, now that the lupin has a lower density, you can select and check everything. Let's see what this got us. All the other plants are normal, but the lupin is at 10 of density. That looks really good. Yep, that will work. So control Z again. Get in the camera view and start painting. I think that's way too much plants. Let's just undo that. Unselect everything again here and start selecting only the grass assets. Now you put the grass density to 300. Select everything again. And put the total density lower. This way, we get less of every other plants, while having more grass than before. Okay, I'm done painting everything the camera sees. You can go back to selection mode. Select exponential height fog in the outliner. Scroll down a little and just below volumetric fog, you'll see this albedo color. I'll put just a little yellow. You now select Skylight. See, right there it's really dark. We can change that a little. Change the intensity scale and it will make the whole scene brighter. See, now we see the log pretty well, but that's too much. We still want a dark scene, right? So let's try some values. Two looks good. Now let's make the directional light value lower, 2.5. Yeah, that's good. The fog, is it really that important? Oh wow, yes it sure is. We're almost done, just a few settings to perfect. Like the fog, maybe it's better at 1.8. Yeah, I think so. Click anywhere in the scene to select it, then press G to hide all useless stuff. Click perspective, then cinematic viewport, and finally go back in the camera view. Now press F9 on your keyboard. If you're on a laptop, you might need to also hold the FN key. And screenshot captured! That's not really the most professional way to export an image, but it works well enough to share your work. Great work completing this project! I'm looking forward to making more environments with you, all available in this playlist. Thank you, see you soon.